right, listen up. Drop everything you're doing and take a second to look at your laptop, whether it's running Windows or Mac OS. That's what 99% of the world sees. But here's the thing. Not in Shenzhen. And why? Because Huawei has just done something massive. They've launched new PCs that have completely cut Microsoft out of the picture. And let me be clear, they're not doing this quietly or as a side project. They're making a huge statement. These machines are running their in-house operating system, Harmony OS Next. No Windows. No Android runtime. No Google services. Just pure Chinese code. This isn't some quirky little alternative. They're not doing this because they thought it'd be fun. No, they're doing it because they had to. After years of facing U.S. sanctions, Huawei realized something. Relying on Western tech is a major liability. And here's the most surprising part. This isn't just some experimental OS that's not ready for prime time. No, it's real. It works. And it's on sale right now. So if Huawei doesn't need Windows anymore, what does that mean for Microsoft's control over China's massive 400 million strong PC market? Even bigger, what if this is just the beginning? What if other companies follow suit? Looking at data from IDC, Microsoft's share of China's PC OS market has already dropped from 82% in 2020 to 72% by early 2024. And it's not just about user choice anymore. Government mandates are playing a huge role, along with the rise of domestic alternatives. This launch by Huawei? It's not some small test run. It's a direct challenge to the existing status quo. While Microsoft's CEO, Satya Nadella, has stayed quiet on the subject, Microsoft is clearly making moves. In January 2025, they opened a new R&D center in Beijing. And this isn't just about innovation or trying to stay competitive in the market. No, it's because they're responding to what they see as a sustained erosion of OS dominance in sovereign markets. This is a major shift. But the question that's got to be asked is, why did Huawei walk away from Windows? The real question here isn't just why it's, who else is going to follow? Harmony OS started as a contingency plan back in 2019, but today, it's embedded in over 800 million devices across the globe, according to Huawei's 2025 Q1 report. Originally designed for smart TVs and wearables, Harmony OS is now running on smartphones, tablets, smart car sand for the first time ever full desktop environments. The version of Harmony OS running on Huawei's new PCs, dubbed Harmony OS Next, is based on a microkernel architecture that completely eliminates dependencies on Android and Linux. This makes it one of the very few major operating systems worldwide that was developed without any US-based code. Huawei isn't here to simply copy existing OS models. They're trying to orchestrate something entirely new and integrated ecosystem where any device can be an extension of another. The entire setup revolves around vertical integration, and to back it up, they have over 10,000 developers working on it. This isn't just a defensive move, it's offensive. They want control over the entire ecosystem, from the operating system to the hardware. But here's the thing. Is Harmony OS ready for the enterprise world, or is this just a bit too experimental, too quickly scaled? Harmony OS Next is not a simple clone of Android or Windows. It's a clean slate platform designed to optimize Chinese chips, AI accelerators, and distributed processing. In contrast to Windows, which still carries decades of legacy code, or Mac OS, which is built on a Unix-based kernel, Harmony OS is streamlined. It's built with a microkernel architecture that's a fraction of the size of traditional monolithic kernels, making it inherently more secure. In fact, Security firms have stated that Harmony OS's attack surface is just one thousandth the size of a traditional kernel, making it far more resilient to exploits. It's built to be lighter, faster, and more secure. And performance tests published by China's software testing center show that it boots 32% faster than Windows 11 on the same hardware. And when multitasking, it uses 29% less memory. But there's one big hurdle. Its developer ecosystem is still a work in progress. As of last month, Harmony OS only has 4,200 native apps available, compared to Microsoft's staggering 669,000. So, the question isn't whether Harmony OS is better in terms of performance or benchmarks. It's whether Huawei can close that developer gap and create a viable ecosystem that doesn't rely on the global app ecosystem they no longer control. Early reviews of Huawei's Harmony OS-powered PCs have been generally positive. The experience has been described as buttery smooth but also eerily quiet almost like using an operating system from a parallel universe. Boot times average just 8.7 seconds, and app transitions show latency under 50 milliseconds. That's faster than similarly priced Intel-based Windows machines. Built-in apps like Huawei Docs and Pedal Mail are functional, 
but international reviewers have pointed out problems with third-party compatibility. Apps like Adobe, Zoom, and even WeChat for Business don't yet have native versions as of March 2025. Huawei claims that these apps will be ported over within the year, but has provided no specific timeline. For domestic Chinese users, Huawei's ecosystem is almost frictionless. But for anyone outside of China, it's a clean room with no door. Huawei's high silicon division has been producing domestic chips that defy conventional logic. Despite U.S. restrictions, their new Kirin 96C chips are powering the latest Harmony OS PCs, offering up to 16 cores and clock speeds of 3.1 GHz. These chips are also powering over 1,300 data centers across China and are being used for AI training, though not at the same level as NVIDIA's A100. Still, the power of these chips is undeniable, even if there are still scaling and ecosystem challenges to work through. Huawei's big pitch, however, isn't just about hardware. It's about seamless control. Harmony OS uses what it calls a distributed operating system, which means that any Harmony OS device can share CPU, memory, and other resources with other devices in real time. In practical terms, this means you could drag a file from your phone to your laptop, edit it on a tablet, and print it from your smart fridge, all without needing to sync to the cloud. As of February 2025, more than 230 million devices are connected via Huawei's super device interface, and test results have shown that transferring a 2 gigabytes file from a phone to a PC takes just 2.7 seconds four times faster than Apple's AirDrop. The problem here is that you need Huawei hardware to unlock this magic. Without it, the whole ecosystem collapses. So, the real question is, are consumers and businesses willing to commit to every single piece of Huawei's chain? Since its U.S. ban in 2019, Huawei has faced significant setbacks, including a massive drop in its global smartphone market share. But now, with Harmony OS powering over 800 million devices and with new PCs shipping without any Western software, Huawei is repositioning itself as the cornerstone of China's digital self-reliance. In fact, they've allocated $4.3 billion in new R&D spending toward their OS and chipset divisions. That's more than double the annual software budgets of Xiaomi and Oppo combined. In response, the Chinese government has issued procurement directives urging public institutions to prioritize Harmony OS over Windows by the third quarter of 2025. But the real question isn't just how Huawei will fare domestically, it's whether they can rebuild trust in global supply chains. With no access to Google, Intel, or TSMC, Huawei's success is tethered to whether they can establish a new, independent ecosystem that doesn't rely on Western technology. Internally, Microsoft is clearly worried. In March 2025, leaked strategy documents revealed that Microsoft views Harmony OS as a significant threat to their market share in Asia, especially in state-run and enterprise sectors. They've already expanded localized Azure compatibility for Chinese clients to counter this. NVIDIA, while technically barred from selling high-performance chips to Huawei, has admitted in regulatory filings that they're keeping a close eye on the development of sovereign AI ecosystems in Asia, which is understood to be code for Harmony OS. And this is just the beginning. Analysts have said that Huawei's rapid development of its ecosystem has caught Silicon Valley by surprise. Harmony OS is forcing companies to come to terms with a future where they no longer control the rules. Huawei's not just surviving without global apps. It's recalibrating what essential software even means in China's market. With the absence of Google and Microsoft products, Huawei has ramped up local partnerships. For example, WPS Office, developed by Kingsoft, saw a 36% user increase in 2024 and now boasts over 560 million active users. Huawei cloud services have also seen 28% year-over-year growth in revenue, hitting $6.88 billion in 2024 as local governments and state-owned enterprises migrate data away from Azure and AWS. But the real test lies ahead. Can Huawei scale beyond China? If they succeed domestically, what's stopping them from exporting this model to other sanctioned or surveillance-aligned countries? Huawei's Harmony OS isn't just an isolated product. It's part of a broader, state-engineered ecosystem designed to sever dependencies on foreign tech. It's a radical shift that could reshape the global tech landscape in ways we're only beginning to understand. If this formula works, it could fundamentally alter the digital order. So buckle up. This ride is just getting started.